How's it going everyone? So it is February 3rd here in Kentucky and uh, it's right around my favorite time to start doing late season deer management, okay? And you know, the reason it's one of my favorite times is because, you know, it's cooled out. You can get your work done without being all sweaty, having bugs all over you. And you can really see, you know, what you're looking at. When you start getting the foliage on the trees and stuff, you're not going to get a prime example of what you're going to be seeing in the upcoming fall because at least here in Kentucky the leaves are mostly off by the late fall and they're absolutely off by winter and so when you're seeing all the leaves gone in the winter you can actually see really what you're going to be seeing in the fall while also being able to get work done on those areas. So today we're going to talk about three main things you're going to need on your property to have a really successful deer herd and you probably have heard this before. You're going to need your nutrition supply, your water supply, your cover supply, all right? If you have those three things, your deer herd is gonna be better. There are also some other things uh, that I think should go into that equation. A lot of people don't put them in there. Uh, I think your predator levels, you know, they're gonna have an effect regardless on your deer. Uh, I don't know how much of an effect. I've read quite a few articles on it. I've, I've heard that different places have different amounts of, of uh, deer mortality rates, you know, depending on coyotes and bobcats and things in that area. Uh, especially in the spring with the fawns. So, you know, as a rule of thumb, taking out a few coyotes every year from your property is a good thing. It's going to balance that predator to prey ratio uh, between your deer and your coyotes, because I think coyotes probably across the U.S. are the biggest predator towards uh, white-tailed deer fawns or, or any kind of deer fawns. In fact, coyotes actually became such a problem. I think it was, it was in Utah, where it may have been Maybe in Oklahoma, it was one of those two states uh, that the Department of Fish and Wildlife Resources there actually started to pay people for the tail of a coyote, like 25 bucks for every coyote they'd kill, because first off, they realized that, that probably either trapping or hunting were the two best ways to really get coyotes out of an area, and so uh, I thought that was neat. So I'll put this in simple terms. Today, I'm going to be telling you things you can do right now to help your deer herd all the way up until hunting season and throughout hunting season uh, and it's going to better your property i'm a smaller property guy okay what i'm doing here applies to almost every property out there i can't think of a one that it really doesn't apply to so when it comes to trail cameras in the late season i really love using them okay and i, I keep them out almost all year because i love to see what deer are on my property when they start to shed and really you know what their overall health status is are my deer skinny? If they're skinny, I need to put more food out there, more nutrition. Uh, you know, if they're sick, there's, there's something wrong. They're probably highly stressed. Uh, you know, if they've got bite marks on them, they probably have way too many coyotes in your property. If you're getting a coyote picture, every 100 pictures of your deer, you probably have a high coyote population and you need to start taking them out. Uh, so if you're getting, yeah, 100 pictures of deer to one picture of a coyote, that's probably not a good thing. Uh, so you should definitely try and, and get out there and do some predator hunting or, or predator trapping, um, whatever you have time for. Another thing trail cameras do is they really just keep you involved with your deer herd because it's easy, um, I think at least, really just to kind of forget about your deer herd and just say, you're here during hunting season, I forget about, about you the rest of the year, and then I'm going to come back to this resource and, and harvest some deer during deer season again. and. Uh, I mean, that's okay, but I think I think we owe it to the animals to try and better their lives a little bit. I think that'd be the, the best thing to do. So minerals, you know, a lot of people don't think they make a difference. I disagree, uh, and especially when it comes to trail cameras, they're extremely helpful in the late season. I mean, you can just see this whole area around uh, this, this mineral site that I have is, is pawed up by the deer. They've been using it a lot, and th that's not just a coincidence. There's actually a reason, and that's because deer, after the rut, after the deer season, after, after they've been running everywhere, they are low on nutrients, okay? And so they're going to these mineral licks because it's a very easy, simple way to get, you know, salt back into their system and calcium back into their system, phosphorus back into their system, and tons of other trace minerals. Uh, and so, you know, I'm a big fan of Trophy Rock 465. It's worked really well for me. Whatever you're using, make sure that, you know, you are giving them nutrients in your supplement, okay? Because there are, you know, a salt block, is a great attractant, okay, and it, 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 it does give the deer a fat content, but that's all it does, okay. Getting trace minerals into your deer, that is important if you're wanting bigger antlers and you're wanting a healthier deer herd, okay. You know, deer are going to start shedding their antlers soon and start growing new ones, okay. 
when they get these trace minerals, when they get these minerals in their system, it goes directly, well first off it goes to their bone supply because they need to, to strengthen up. And then, once they have an excess amount of it, it starts going to their antlers and they start growing up, okay? When it comes to your does, when your does get it, and they start feeding their, their, their fawns this spring, the fawns are going to have a healthier milk supply, it's going to be more nutritious, and so your fawns are going to be, your survival rates for your fawns are going to go up as well, and that's a good thing, depending on where you are. I mean, if you have 100 deer per, you know, square mile, <laughs> that's, a, that's quite a bit of deer, but, uh, but overall, I, I say for most people, it's, it's better to have a healthy deer herd than not to have a healthy deer herd, so minerals can be really uh, beneficial to your deer herd in the late season, especially in the late season. I think, you know, I think my favorite time to really keep these mineral supplements out there, and I, I do it all year round, but uh, I think my favorite time is probably late winter, all the way through early spring, all the way into to, to early summer. I think that's the most crucial period, okay? So late winter to early summer, I think. In between that, that, that area, bucks start using this stuff like crazy. I got every single buck, almost every single buck I got later in the season on trail camera, on trail camera in the summer because of the, the mineral supplements that I'm putting out there. All right, so let's talk food plots, and you know, as far as nutrition for deer. So, you know, food plots, it's the same way for me that it probably is for a lot of people out there. You, you don't necessarily have the right equipment. It's a lot of your time. You know it's great for the deer. I have, I'm not trying to diss that or anything. I'm, I'm, I would completely agree with you. Food plots are nutritionally amazing for your deer. They create bigger antlers and healthier bodies. But not everyone has the equipment to make that, you know? And, and you see these people out there who bring their rakes and stuff out and they'll, they'll make food plots. That's cool. Good job for your work. But the problem is, the only problem I have with that is that like, how much of a difference are you going to make and how fast is that food plot going to be gone? I mean, the deer are going to rip that thing up. It's not going to be a good thing to hunt over and nutritionally, it's really not going to make that much of a difference. Uh, whereas they could, you could probably go to a different part of your property and eat some clover and, and have the same, same amount of, of nutrition put into their bodies. Uh, so how do you exactly create a food plot without planting anything, you know? And the answer is natural vegetation, okay? You can see this stuff behind me, all right? That is old, brittle grasses, okay? They're, the deer do not like them that much. You know, they'll eat them occasionally if they're really hungry. But for the most part, that is not what the deer like to eat. They like to eat new, young, fresh, nutritious vegetation, okay? And, you know, you can create that very easily in a wooded environment, okay? So, sorry, my tripod just fell. So you can see all around me, I'm in a really thick honeysuckle patch with quite a few ashes in it. Um, there's an oak here there, but I'd like to show you something. So last year, I came in here uh, with my, my cousin Logan, and we cut down a bunch of honeysuckles because we wanted to make this a hunting area, okay? And luckily for us, our work kind of got a little bit destroyed by these ash trees. Now, if, if any of you have heard of the emerald ash borer, it's a beetle that uh, kills all these ash trees, and so our ash tree population is like at zero right now uh, because this beetle came through and just destroyed these ash trees. And so now we have ash trees falling everywhere. But what I'd like to show you is that when we cut down those things, those, those honeysuckles, it created all this nice new lush vegetation. Okay, and you can see this is just really pliable stuff. And when it's green, I mean, the deer absolutely love it. <clears throat> it's true. Nutritionally, this food plot is probably not the best out there. Planting soybeans would be a much better option. But this is natural stuff. I didn't have to come in and plant it. I didn't have to till anything up. It just grew on its own over a short amount of time after I came in here and cleared out these honeysuckles and let the light from the sun reach the ground. Seeds cannot grow without light of some kind. And uh, the cool thing is, this stuff is going to thrive here, all right? Because it's, it's been here for a while. You can tell, I mean, out in the field, it's definitely thrived. So we've talked about nutrition. I don't think I'll talk too much about water sources because, quite frankly, you all know what a water source is. I don't need to explain that to you. If you need a water source, dig a pond. That's basically all I can tell you as far as water sources. Uh, they're important. So I've got an analogy here, and it's going to sound kind of weird at first, but stick with me because I think it has, uh, it holds quite a bit of value. So I think that a good deer property is like a good human, okay? 
a good human tries to be the best person possible, the best well-rounded person in every facet of their life to say, you know, physically, I'm going to do my best to excel. Mentally, I'm going to do my best to, to excel. Morally, I'm going to do my best to excel. And you're trying to become the best person you can be. It's the same thing with a property, okay? If you cannot bring those things together, you're not going to reach your full potential, okay? You're just, as, as a human, you wouldn't reach your full potential if you didn't try and branch out and do the best you could with a, with all aspects of your life same thing with the property if you have too much if you have too much nutrition but not enough cover you're not going to keep the deer if you have too much cover but not enough nutrition you're not going to keep the deer okay uh, same with water sources so a lot of guys they go out there and they, they they see all this cover and they think to themselves right when they see it well i can just take that out of there and make that nutrition because you know that's going to give me more nutrition to my deer you know bigger antlers bigger body that's true but it also takes away a very important aspect of your property, okay? Because to to lay your property aside, you know, or your, your safety aside for the deer, just say, you know, you're gonna get all this food, but you don't get any cover because, you know, I felt like it would be better for you all, it's better for me if you all just got a lot of food and no cover. If you do that, your deer aren't gonna stay on your property. Because if I were a deer, maybe I'd go in there at nighttime, I'd eat all your food on your property, but then I'd go back to a different property where I can find some cover because I don't want to stay in a place where I'm open all the time. So, you know, something like this, a, a cedar area. Potentially, I could go through there and I could cut down all those trees and make it a food plot. Potentially. No, well, again, I don't actually have the equipment necessary to break up this kind of ground, but do realize this, if a lot of guys have that ability don't always do that you know if you ha you got to keep a good percentage of your property and cover a good percentage of your property and nutrition okay and then you want to have your water sources on the side which you know can be anywhere in your property quite frankly thank you so much for watching camera crew at the worst we really appreciate it uh stay tuned for the next video subscribe if you haven't already we'd appreciate that uh but but stay tuned for the next video because i think you really are going to enjoy it it's pretty darn cool it's uh it's it's new it's fresh it's it's a different kind of hunting that i haven't i haven't heard about in a while i have heard about it but it's been a while and uh it's it's pretty cool so we're gonna join evan keating next week down in kansas sorry i was thinking about the state in my head down in kansas as uh he goes after some pretty cool game just stay tuned it's gonna be awesome